Hey everybody, hope you're having an amazing and blessed day today. Hope everything's going well for you. I wanted to share a little something with you that's been on my mind for a long time. But I guess I'll start with a question. Do you ever question or wonder why religion is so destructive? Like why are belief systems, religions, ideologies so destructive? I mean, if you really think about it, like through history, probably 70% of all wars are based on either a religion or an ideology. We're better than them, so we're going to go kill them. I mean, to some degree, right? And why, why is that? Because if somebody believes something different than me, what is that to me? I mean, if somebody believes, like just take Christianity, for example. Christianity has a thousand plus denominations. And they fight each other, which is crazy because Christianity, Jesus actually, actually explicitly said to, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. And then he said what his commandments were, to love one another. And, and then he boiled the entire Old Testament down to love God and love your neighbors. I mean, so the foundational principle of Christianity is to love each other. And Jesus said, it, they will know you for how you love one another. Like that, that is the fundamental belief in Christianity. And yet we murder, kill, steal, and destroy all the time in the name of our doctrine and our ideology and belief. And I was just wondering, like, why is this? Like, why is this? And I've been studying church history. I read a book uh, that's on church history. Here it is. Let me pull it out. Here it is, Church History in Plain Language. It's a great book, Church History in Plain Language. Highly recommend it. Um, but it goes like decade by decade, century by century of Christianity. And it's very fascinating. Love to get into it. But what happened is I saw the argument of doctrine was con con completely consistent through history. Like I always thought that you had the epistles, you know, you had Jesus came and then you had the the apostles, they went out and kind of spread Christianity, and things happened. And at some point, Constantine became a Christian, and he made uh, Christianity legal in, in the Roman Empire. And then I thought Christianity kind of spread like wildfire from there. And then all of a sudden, the next guy comes along, and he says that you have to be a Christian. And, and then I thought that's when like the Roman Catholic Church came to be around, and then you have 1,500 years of dark ages. And then Martin Luther says, hang on a minute, and then breaks that up. And then you have just a splintering of doc doctrines from there. And that's not exactly accurate. Because the truth is that, that from even in the New Testament, right after Jesus, there was doctrinal disputes constantly. I mean, the Paul, Peter, John, they're all trying to deal with doctrinal disputes and that happened all the way through there was always doctrinal um, disputes all I mean every decade every century it was the same thing and I recognized the pattern through that I recognized a pattern that kept going over and over and it was the same story over and over and over again and it was quite surprising and let me just so so the first 200, 300 years of Christianity is a perfect example of that because you have Jesus who brought an experience with God. He brought an experience. And, and he even doctrinally was disputing the Pharisees, just to point that out. But he, so he comes along and he mixes everything up. And he has an experience and he expresses that to people. And then you have the apostles who have an experience with God that is life-changing, 
life transforming, transforming and brings life to those who encounter it. But in the first 200 years of Christianity, it was serious. If you were a Christian, it was serious because you could be persecuted, you could get killed, your family killed. I mean, you got to be serious about it if you're going to do that. And and then it wasn't until Constantine came around. Constantine became emperor by defeating another guy and killing him. And he prayed to Jesus, air quotes, and asked to have victory. And he got victory. And so that so then he attributed the Christian God to his victory, which is such a Roman idea and completely ridiculous. But anyway, but he brought all the bishops, which were like the pastor, all the pastors, all the regional pastors all around the Roman Empire. He brought them together, 200 some bishops, and he forced them to define Christianity. He wanted them to define Christianity. And that's where we have the Council of Nicaea. That's where we get the Apostles' Creed from. That's where we uh, get the, the Bible as it is, as we see it, because he really wanted them to define Christianity. And, and so they did. They didn't really have a choice, but, you know, that's what happened. So, and then the next guy comes along, and he, after Constantine, the next emperor, he makes Christianity law. You have to be a Christian. You have to be a Christian. He got rid of paganism. And you had to be a Christian. And that is the process to religion. So first you have somebody that has an experience, that has a true experience, life-changing experience with God. And then they get to worship a certain way and then they start spreading it to other people and they get to worship a certain way and they have an experience a true experience and at some point somebody comes along and defines that experience we are going to define it and then and usually you know this happens when it gets named when it gets named that means i mean you got the christian religion there's methodists there's uh catholics greek orthodox um Presbyterian, Baptist, Protestant, Evangelical. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. You got the free Presbyterians, the locked up Presbyterians. You got the Methodists. And I love the Methodists because that is a perfect example of defining something. And it was John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement. And it was his method of prayer and fasting and worship was based on it. And so they called him the method because it was his method. So they became the Methodists. I think that's hilarious because it's that's the exact example of just we're going to define it and name it. And we need to do that. And then it becomes a religion when it becomes a have to. When it becomes a have to, you have to do it this way. When you have to do it that way. You can't do it that way. You have to do it our way. That's when it goes to a religion. So it goes from a you get to worship this way to you, you should do it this way to a you have to do it this way. And that's the process of religion. And it goes from something that brings lo- <clears throat> excuse me, life to death because you have to. And here's the thing. Obviously, if you have to do something and you don't, that means you need to be punished. There needs to be, there's consequences. So that's how we get into death. So Jesus said that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come to bring life and life more abundantly. John 10, 10. And that's when you have an experience that turns into death. Something that brings life then goes into death. And that's how it works because it becomes a have to. And you can do it in every religion. Every religion, you can see the same thing. It's the same process. You get to, you should, to you have to. And that's what brings death. I hope that blesses you. We need to stop doing a have to and realize it's a get to. Because that's what God wants. He wants us to want to worship Him, not have to worship Him. And that's what brings life 
I don't want to, way more to say about that. I have a good one. <laughs>